while we're talking about various gases, I'd like to fill another balloon with this helium gas. Now, helium is interesting because it was discovered actually on the sun in 1868. And um, you may wonder how it was discovered there. And it was discovered there by looking at the light that is emitted when, uh, when it is heated to very high temperatures. So uh, this is a balloon. And as you can see, this balloon is also less dense than air. It's, uh, it rises. And so you would suspect that this has helium in it. And indeed, it does. Now, one of the interesting things we can do with helium is to actually breathe it. Now, I'd like to caution you. Most gases you breathe are harmful. So don't go home and breathe gases of various sorts. In fact, even the helium that you get at the zoo or the circus is not very safe because it's not sufficiently pure. And it often has contaminants in it that can uh, do, be injurious to you. So I don't recommend that you try this. But we can do it here because we use special research grade high purity helium. So let me breathe it and see what happens. And as you see, it makes me talk a little bit like Donald Duck. <laughs> now, the reason is that sound travels about twice as fast in helium as it does in air. And as a result, it raises the natural frequencies of the, re of the cavities in my head, the resonant frequencies. And uh, it makes me talk a little bit funny, right? Now, most people have seen that. How many have seen that? Pretty much everyone. But here's something you don't see so often. I have back here another gas. That's, in fact, very different from helium. In fact, in most ways, it's exactly the opposite of helium. Can you see what's different about it? It's a very heavy gas. If I tied it off, it would drop like a rock. This is a gas called sulfur hexafluoride. And I want to try to breathe this and see what it does to my voice. And again, this is another one of those gases that is safe to breathe only if it's extremely pure. So here we go. And as you see, breathing the sulfur hexafluoride <laughs> makes my voice sound very low. <laughs> now, the other interesting thing about sulfur hexafluoride <laughs> is that because it's such a heavy gas, it stays down in my lungs for a long time. <laughs> Not like the helium, which rises and goes out my nose right away. So as a result, I'll sound like this for the rest of the lecture, if you don't mind. <laughs> But there actually are ways to get rid of the sulfur hexafluoride. We could have Mr. Lovell hang me by my feet and empty it out. Or no, 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 let's not do that. Better yet, maybe I'll just bend over and exhale and see if I can get rid of some of it. Let's try that. And so I hope that makes me sound almost normal again. At least it always has.